Effectively, we've had a framework order from Irish Rail, which we signed in December 21. It's a framework order over 10 years, and we've had two batch orders have actually been placed. The first order is for 13 BEMUs and 6 EMUs, and the second order is for 18 BEMUs. So we commence production in Katowice in Poland in October 2023. We're in the current stage where the first train is getting ready for static validation in Poland before it's then shipped across to Dublin to start a very intensive period of both static validation and dynamic validation on the tracks. Um, one of the things that people don't realise is that in Ireland the track is actually a different gauge, so it's wider, so we can't perform any of that testing actually in Europe. So we have to transport the train across to Ireland first thing before we can do that testing. The other interesting thing about the train is it's actually an articulated train. So whereas normally you have two cars, two bogies under each car, in this case you've actually got one bogey underneath two cars. So we actually reduce the number of bogies, which means the train weighs less and it also saves on energy costs and maintenance costs. So in terms of what the public are going to expect in Dublin, it's going to be a completely different passenger experience they have. The trains are going to be much lighter, brighter, seem a lot wider, much bigger windows, and then open gangways all throughout the train. So in terms of passenger security and safety, that will only add to the ambience. So not only are we building the trains, but we're also equipping the signalling system between the Drogheda to the Greystones line, which is the line that the DART uses. That's used the latest ETCS technology. So that was being fitted on the tracks at the moment, and then we'll have onboard technology as well. So not only will the train be different, we have a much more up-to-date signalling system as well. And as is a battery train, you also need to charge the batteries. So we're building an infrastructure charging project in Drogheda. That will basically be the place where the train will run and will charge the batteries automatically so that when the overhead line runs out, the train will run on its own, recharge at Drogheda and then return its route back into the centre of Dublin. Um, we'll also be charged at Inchicor where the trains will actually be um, commissioned and so what will happen is overnight there'll, there'll be a short power point that goes into charged batteries. But we know that Irish Rail have plans to introduce more uh, charging infrastructure throughout the network because with a contract like this, they've got a number of trains, they can't just rely on one charging station. So the one at Drogheda will be the first one, but there'll be several more coming about across the network. So in terms of the battery range, we're looking at 80 kilometres in a full charge. Um, the battery should last nine years. Um, clearly the battery is an important part of the train. Uh, we know technology is changing all the time in batteries, so we're hoping that the technology will prove even further, such that we should be able to increase the range and the lifetime of the batteries. We also have a 15-year, what's called a TSSSA, which is a technical support and spare parts agreement. So we will support RSR in their maintenance by providing technicians and spare service throughout the life of the train. Train set one that you see behind you will leave the factory uh, in uh, the end of August 2024 and be delivered to Dublin in uh, in early September 24. Uh, we have constructed a test and commissioning facility in Inchicore which will be used for all of the DART trains as they come off the production line, mainly because we can't fit the bogies here in this factory and uh, they have to undergo test and commissioning uh, at that site. So when the trains arrive um, in Dublin, we are faced with a number of challenges. The first one is that we have to ship, ship the batteries separate to the train because of uh, safety concerns. The shipping companies won't ship the trains with the batteries on them. So the batteries will be um, delivered separately. When the train arrives, we have to fit it onto dummy bogies first before we put it onto the, the normal bogies because the train set is articulated. Once we've done that, the train is basically raked up into its normal formation. We do a number of months of a, or a period of static testing before the train then goes out onto the main line. Firstly, it will be on the main line that does not have overhead lines. So we rely purely on the battery charging to do the testing. We have about a six hour window maximum every night to do testing. Um, so we have to charge the battery, do the testing, and then return it to the depot. Once we've done the sufficient amount of testing for that, we're then going to the line which has got overhead catenary, and actually availability for that line is a lot less, so the, the window of time we have at night is much lower than that, so we need more testing slots to be able to complete all of that. Actually, the biggest challenge on the network is network access time. We only have 51 kilometres of overhead line, uh, and obviously our colleagues in the infrastructure department are busy working at night repairing and upgrading that system 
So for us to get access to do track testing for serial trains is difficult and prototype trains is difficult. They will be tested and commissioned out of Inchicore and then once they're released to service they will be based at Drawda Depot. Um, so they're cascading some diesels out of Drawda Depot and that depot will be a joint electric and diesel depot. The six electric trains will be based in Fairview where the current Dart fleet is maintained as they're just pure electric and that's where they will be. Well the new depot with Maynooth is, is part of the railway order for uh, Dart Plus West. Um, so we have applied for that 18 months ago, the planning process. We're expecting to hear imminently on that. It may or may not trigger further a judicial review or something like that, but that pushes the start point back for the depot all the time. So we're at risk of the depot not really being available to the end of 2030. It's manageable in that we will maintain the fleet, Order 1 and Order 2 at Fairview and Drawda, uh, with some lift capability in Inchicore um, for, for now. If we were to place an order to replace the original Dart fleet, we would maintain those at Fairview. But we cannot place any further orders for additional Dart Plus stock like the train behind you until we have a new depot at minute. The flexibility this product has, we've got battery units and we've got electric units. Um, at the end of the day, um, depending how battery technology changes, either we can add more batteries to electric trains or we can remove the batteries and rely on just on the electric trains. So it's basically all of the options are open to Irish Rail. We know they've got a very Im um, impressive strategic plan to electrify Ireland um, and to decarbonise Ireland. So they've got all the pieces of the jigsaw necessary to do that. Yeah, they're a very good fit for Cork. The models show that they would work well in Cork. It's the exact same train. Probably called a cart, not a dart. Um, and there, there's potential for them to operate in the Limerick area and Galway area also. The same, the same train, the same technology would work very, very well there. So we'll prove it on dart. We'll prove the charging capability, the charging infrastructure, um, and and shake any gremlins out of the system first before we we start looking at other locations.